Hello and welcome to another 10 minute tutorial. In this session we will be looking at the subject of Gibbs free energy change. Gibbs free energy change or delta G is used to predict whether a reaction is feasible. That's to say whether a reaction can happen on its own at a given temperature. It takes into account the enthalpy change of the reaction, the entropy change of the reaction and the temperature the reaction is taking place at. You may remember being told that uh, when substances react to become more stable, i.e. end up with a negative enthalpy change, an exothermic reaction, and substances tend to disorder, and so therefore we would expect a positive entropy change. However, this doesn't explain the fact that some reactions are endothermic, and some reactions, like precipitation reactions, have a negative entropy change. The overall thing to take into account then is delta G. It is the factor that is used to decide whether a reaction will take place. It is measured in kilojoules per mole. The equation to calculate delta G is delta H, the enthalpy change, minus the temperature times the entropy change. And there are some important features to note in this equation. Temperature is always measured in Kelvin. However, sometimes in an exam question, they may ask you to calculate the delta G for a reaction given in degrees centigrade, in which case you'd be expected to convert centigrade into Kelvin. Entropy is generally given in joules per Kelvin per mole, but enthalpy and free energy in generally in kilojoules per mole. And so it's important that you convert your entropy units into kilojoules per Kelvin per mole. The main factor that we're looking for here to decide whether a reaction is going to take place or not is that delta G has got to be less than or equal to zero. So in an exam you might be asked to decide whether a reaction is likely to happen at a given temperature, i.e. whether it's feasible. Or indeed you might have to calculate the temperature at which the reaction becomes feasible. Whatever way you're approaching the question, it is important that your units match. So, for example, calculate the delta G for the following reaction. We've got the thermal decomposition of calcium carbonate, and we're given, in this case, the enthalpy data and the entropy data. Note that the first thing that we shall do is to divide delta S by 1000 so that we get an enthalpy, uh, entropy change in kilojoules per Kelvin per mole. And so with that information, we slot the numbers into the equation and we find that our delta G is coming out at plus 130.6 kilojoules per mole. Now since delta G for that reaction at 298 Kelvin was positive, the reaction is not feasible at this temperature. So the next part of an exam question is likely to be to calculate the temperature at, the re at which the reaction does become feasible. This means the temperature at which delta G is zero and so if we have the equation delta H minus T delta S is delta G and delta G is zero, then we can have the equation rearranged such that delta H has got to equal T delta S. And if we're trying to chain find out the temperature, then we can rearrange the equation so that the temperature is delta H divided by delta S. So let's have a look at that example. We've got to try and find the temperature at which that thermal decomposition of calcium carbonate will take place spontaneously. We were given information in the question about the enthalpy change and the entropy change. We converted the entropy change into kilojoules per Kelvin per mole. And so we can put that into the equation. and we can work out the final answer as being 1114 Kelvin. 
If we had to convert that into degrees centigrade, remember we subtract 273 and we get the answer 841 degrees centigrade. So we've looked through that as an example. Be aware that in uh, some of the A2 exam questions, you may be expected to calculate uh, an enthalpy change by having uh, formation enthalpy data, for example, given to you as, an, as you would have looked at in AS. And you may be asked to calculate entropy change from the entropies of the reactants and the products. So by following this tutorial, you can now understand the concept of free energy, understand that delta G must be less than or equal to zero for a reaction to be feasible, and you can calculate delta G at any given temperature. But also you can calculate the temperature at which the reaction does become feasible. Just remember to make sure the entropy is converted into kilojoules per Kelvin per mole. Anyway, you can now go to my website to try and find out and to have a go at some of my test just health exercises. The link is in the description below. You can find me on Facebook. And you can follow me on Twitter. Subscribe to my YouTube channel to note when more 10 minute tutorials become available. And in the meantime, if you have a particular subject which you would like a 10 minute tutorial on, please leave a message in the comments. Thank you.